young man, tennis was indeed a frustrating experience. But tennis can be a fun sport, a lifetime sport, and this is the challenge facing physical education teachers. Unfortunately, physical education teachers have to teach all sports, from archery to judo to every sport. They cannot oftentimes be a master of all sports. The purpose of this tape is to help physical education teachers learn some of the basics so they can teach sports so it will be a fun, enjoyable sport. Another problem facing physical education teachers is they have people of all different abilities in their group. They may have one person that's never played tennis before, and then they may have another person in their class who has professional training and will come over and say, what do you think is the best grip? An eastern grip, continental grip, a western grip, and a PE teacher has to be knowledgeable or they lose their credibility. It's not an easy task. So now we'll go through this tape. Hopefully, you'll pick up some ideas. It won't have all the answers, but maybe some ideas on this tape will help you be a better and more effective physical education teacher. I need you to come up and line up on this line. This is called the baseline. Spread out, okay, spread out. Right, put the racket in there, right hand or your left hand, depending on which hand you are. Okay, now I'm gonna count off. I want you to remember your number. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, okay, all the threes take three giant steps forwards. Three giant steps forwards, there you go. All the twos take two giant steps backwards. Great, okay? Now, set the racket down on the ground. Set the racket down on the ground. And we want you with the hand, if you're right-handed, we want you to reach down and pick up the racket with that hand. That is called your forehand grip. Your forehand grip. We're gonna teach you a neat thing today. It's called downs. And what we want you to do is we want you to bounce the ball on the ground and see how many you can keep going on the ground. You wanna try that? Try some downs now. Okay, everybody spread out. See if you can do it. There you go. Good. Okay. Now, if you hit the ball all over the place, you just go back to your spot where you're supposed to be standing. That's good. Everybody stop. Good. Those are called, what are those called? Downs. Downs, right. Now we're going to do ups with the same grip. We want you to try to do it in the air. See if you can keep it going in the air. Okay, go ahead and try it. There you go. Keep count. See if, you, if you're doing a real good job, see if you can keep count of how many you can do. Maybe you can just do one. Try to do two the next time. Good. Okay, everybody stop. We're gonna, today what we're going to do, we're going to learn how to hit volleys. Can everyone get in their ready position? Shake hands with your racket. Pretend you're shaking hands with the racket. Right? Okay, feet equal distance apart, right, racket in front of you, and we want your hands, both hands on the racket. That's called the ready position. Then what we're going to do, it's called shake hands with the racket. Probably what we're going to do, we're going to learn to hit a forehand volley. That's a ball that you hit in the air before it bounces when you're up at the net, okay? You have a firm wrist, a short punching motion, step across, and contact the ball in front, like this, okay? Everybody in your right position, let's try some. Forehand volley, firm wrist, step across, contact the ball in front. Right, short punching motion again. Step across, short punching motion, firm wrist, good. Forehand volley, step across, block. Ready position, backhand volley. Now you step across with your right foot if you're right-handed. Short punching motion, firm wrist, and step across. Ready position, let's do some backhands. Step across, block. Ready position, step across, punch. Ready position, step across, punch. Simon says forehand volley. Step across, punch. Ready position, Simon says backhand volley. Punch. Ready position, Simon says forehand volley. 
punch. Ready position, forehand volley. Good, I caught two of you, didn't I? Ready position, Simon says forehand volley. Good. Okay, what I what I'd like you to do is I'd like you each to grab a partner right now because we're going to practice our volleys. We're going to have tossers and hitters. So grab a partner, grab onto their hand. There you go. Good. Anytime that we play tennis, whenever we let the ball bounce, that's called a ground stroke. Anything on our right side, if we're right-handed, is called a forehand. Anything on our left side, if we're left-handed, is called a backhand. Backhand, we use two hands. Forehand, we use one hand. What we're going to learn next is the forehand swing, and then we're going to have tossers and hitters like we did on the volley. Now, on the forehand swing, everybody shake hands with the racket, again, to get your grip. Correct, okay? Remember, you're waiting in the ready position. Now, the way you do a forehand swing is you take your racket back, you have an early back swing, and you turn your side completely. Can everyone do that for me, please? Turn your side completely. You have a level swing, and your weight is forwards when you make contact with the ball. The contact point is out in front of you. You follow through all the way up to the sky so your racket's all the way up on your follow through like this okay that's the forehand swing ready position please okay forehand racket back turn your side okay follow through level at your waist contact point in front and follow through all the way up on the follow through ready position will you do 10 on your own please 10 swings on your own okay do them correctly do them correctly stroke is the backhand side. That's the side that you hit on the opposite side of the forehand. If you're right-handed, that would be the left side. If you're left-handed, that would be the right side. Today we're going to teach you the two-handed backhand. There are two ways to hit the backhand, one-handed and two-handed. We recommend that you start off the PE classes with two hands. We put the other hand on top of the right hand if you're right-handed so they're together. The hands are together like this. When the ball comes to your backhand side, it's the exact same commands as the forehand. 
Early back swing. Level swing. Make contact with the ball in front of you and follow through up high. Ready position? Early back swing. Weight transfer forwards. Contact point in front, follow through up high. that you use to put the ball into play on the tennis court. Okay, so you start off, there's two parts to the serve. There's the toss-up part and the racket part. The toss-up part and the racket part. You always start with your left foot to the right net post if you're right-handed. So everyone line up left foot to the right net post. Right, okay? You start off, you scratch your back with the racket, like this, pretend it's itching you, so you scratch the back with your racket. Now the toss-up part, you hold the ball in front of you, come down inside your leg and straight up and try to toss it as high as you can reach with your racket. As high as you can reach with your racket. Why don't you practice your toss-up now? See if you can practice your toss-up. Okay. If you have to chase the ball on your toss-up, you're not going to have a very good serve. So you try to toss it so you don't have to chase it. It's close to your head. Good. Looks good. Catch it. Don't swing. Just scratch your back. Toss it up. Scratch the back. Scratch the back. Scratch the back. Start this way. Scratch the back. Scratch the back. Scratch the back. Right. Okay. Now, the next part of your serve is what your racket does. Your racket reaches for the sky. It reaches for the ball. And then you follow through across your left side. So you bring them together. You toss it up. You would reach up, follow through across the left side. Toss it up, reach up, follow through across the left side. I will serve one out. Toss it up, reach up, follow through across the left side. That's the way you do your serve. We're going to have these uh, five juniors right now go ahead and try some serves, and then the next group will come in. They'll do five, and then you'll do five. Okay? Scratch your back first. Scratch your back. Scratch your back. Scratch your back, Adam. There you go. Toss up five serves. And when you get done with five, go ahead and go off to the side, and the next group will come in and do five. There you go. Good. Scratch your back, Adam. That's good. Let the next group come in now and try some. Good. Now normally on the serve, we start off with scratching the back first because it's a little easier motion to use. 
these these juniors have had lessons before so some of them do a full service motion but it's really easy if you compare it to throwing the ball over the net okay scratch your back start off scratching your back okay Throw it up we would also recommend on the serve that they not hold two balls in their hand when they toss it but that they hold one ball so it's a little easier to throw it up on the toss also going to learn the full service motion. Remember on the scratching the back, you start off left foot to the right net post, scratch the back, you must stand behind the, either the service line or the baseline depending upon how good you are. If you're good, you can stand back to the baseline, if you're doing well, if you're just starting off, you can stand in closer. You start off, scratch your back, left foot to the right net post, if you're right handed, hold the ball in your fingertips, get your toss up correct out in front of you out in front correctly so you don't have to chase the ball. Remember, reach for the sky, reach for the sky, and follow through across the left side so it's a two-part motion. One, two, okay? One, two. I'd like you to do your scratching your back and try some serve now, okay? Scratch your back, one, two, good. Toss it close to your head. Okay, stop. Good. Now let's do a full service motion. This is if you're more advanced, you want to do a full service motion. If you're getting a lot of them over when you're scratching your back, you start your racket and your ball out in front. The grip you use is the forehand grip. Shake hands with the racket grip. Start your racket and your ball out in front, and both arms drop down together. Then both arms come up together. They spread apart, so it's down together, up together, down your back. From here, it's the exact same motion. You reach up, follow through. Start out in front. Okay, everybody line up like me, please. Right? You would go down together, then up together. Right. Okay, try it again. Down together, then up together. Down your back. You reach up and follow through. So I'll do it for you. Ready? Down together, up together, down your back, and through. Down together, up together, down your back, and through. Why don't you try some on your own now? Good. we're going to learn how to play doubles and that is what we do after we learn how to serve hit forehands and backhands and hit forehands and backhand volleys you learn how to play doubles that's in, that's the next step for us so what we want to do today is I want to show you doubles is two people against two people and in doubles you always have you can let the ball bounce once you can't let it bounce twice and you can hit it in the air in doubles that's the volley okay we're going to have the girls versus the boys today Okay, something a little bit different, no mixed doubles, it's girls versus the boys. Now, whenever you start off playing, you must do a thing called to determine who serves first, called spin the racket. And on the end of the rackets, if you show me your racket, okay, they have things on the end of the racket, sometimes like this, okay? So you'll see that they have writing. And when you spin it, let me see yours, dear. She doesn't have anything. Okay, some of them do and some of them don't. When you spin it, you spin it and one team determines calls up or down. So what I'll do is I'll let you call it. We'll spin it. Would you like to call up or down? Down. Down. So we let it drop and we see what it is. Okay, it's down. So you get your choice of whether you want to serve or you want your opponent to serve. Okay? So what would you like to do? Serve or let your opponent serve? Serve. Now, today what we'll do, since we just learned the serve, 
We will not do the full service motion. We'll do drops, drop forehands, okay? Now, there are four boxes in tennis, four boxes, and I'm going to show you where those are. This line right here, the service line, back here, this is called the service line, and the center line. If you notice, we're standing in one box. Where's the other box at? There's a second box, and there are how many boxes on this side? Two boxes on that side, so there are a total of four boxes. So, why don't the boys go on that side and line up on the service line, the girls on this side. You line up in a box on the service line, okay? Come on back here. One box here, one box here. The girls are serving first, isn't that right? So we need to get you some balls, I'll get you some balls. In doubles, you get two chances to get your serve in the box. Okay, remember zero in tennis is called love, love. After you get it in the box, in the diagonal box, not the straight ahead box, but the cross court box or the diagonal box, they can hit the ball anywhere in the court. Play it out, okay? But today to make it easier, we're gonna hit it short so you can keep the point going, okay? So you get two chances to score, and you always say the score before you serve. The server score first. Just say the score here. Love, love. Drop serve. She got it in. Okay. Now the server switch sides. The server switch sides. And the receivers stay on the same box. The server must say the score each time before they serve. One love. Now, if you miss, that's called a fault. You get two chances to get it in. Switch sides. Two chances. Score? One, one. Now, don't be afraid to come in the net. If you get up there, you can come in the net and do a volley, since we know how to do volleys. That was good. Good shot. Good shot. Score? 2-1. Oh, good try. Rack it back quickly. Score? Two, two. Now at some point, if they feel comfortable with doing their overhand serve, they can do an overhand serve too. But that depends on the student and how well they're doing. Why don't you try an overhand serve? So we'll give her a chance to try an overhand serve now. She got it in. That was in. Short court. Switch sides now. Score? 3-3. Three, three. Now the next point wins. The first one to four wins the point. Ready position. Game. Four points to three. Okay, come on up now. Come on up to the net right here. Now, what we try to do is, it would be your turn to serve, the other teams to serve, they would have to serve an entire game now, four points, first one to four points, and they would keep playing back and forth, alternating servers, okay, alternating servers after each game, until someone won six games. By They have to win, that's called a set, by a margin of two games, so they would play an entire set. Good. Now, you shake hands. Always have them shake hands. Shake hands with your opponents and your partners. Good. Sometimes physical education teachers are faced with the problem of maybe not having courts available. 
or it could be a rainy day and they have to then practice in the gymnasium uh, or if they, it is a nice day they can go out to the practice board like we have here and we have Bob Kraft with us who has been a professional in different places in the world including Hawaii for about 18 years he's going to give us some tips on how to use the backboard we're going to do, we're going to learn how to hit on the backboard and there's some very simple basic drills that you can use to improve your game and have your students use. I think it's one of the greatest techniques for learning for a child because they don't need to have a partner to play with. They can do it on their own. It's self-motivation. The first one we're going to learn today is the forehand where they just hit the basic forehand drill against the wall and they try to do all the forehands against the wall. Now we suggest that they don't get too far back or they don't get too close. If they're too close, it's too difficult to keep the ball in play. Too far back, and they let the ball bounce too many times. But we suggest that you set a, a, a number for them, like 20 balls in a row, 10 balls, whatever they can handle, and they keep it on one side only. And you try to work on their stroke. It's an excellent technique on keeping them busy if you have large groups of kids and very few courts. Now, as they progress, you can have them try different spins. If you know about tennis, you can have them do some slices where you drag underneath the ball. This will teach them how to do a slice. That's what I'm doing now. Okay, after they've done a few forehands, I'd have them do some backhands too. Switch around. If they have a two-handed, have them hit two-handed backhands. Like so. Keep the ball in play. Got it? Try it again. Have them have a couple balls so in case they don't, they miss it. They've got an extra ball to work with. And as you can see, the ball comes right back to you. It makes a perfect partner to keep in play. Now, if they have a one-handed backhand, I would have them just do a one-handed backhand. Have them work on pulling the racket back with the left hand if they're right-handed, keeping the ball in play. Like so. Again, set a number for them, 20, 10, whatever the number is. Try to get them to do it consistently. And try not to have them overhit the ball. As you can see, I've got pretty good form, proper technique. Then, after they reach that point, you can have them alternate. One forehand, one backhand. Now this is excellent for the footwork because it forces them to turn their side. And it makes them work on their control. Forehand and backhand. Again, the same kind of numbers, 10 or 20, whatever they're able to handle. It's an excellent way to work on your ground strokes and keep the ball in play. Right. Again, check their grip. Make sure they're changing their grip between each shot. And at the end of the uh, drills here, we'll have a little uh, review on the grips for you. So this is one of the best things. I would say on this drill, work on their footwork. Make sure that they're turning their side properly on each shot. And continue to alternate. Then you can do the same thing on the, on the volleys. Have them come up and do the volleys against the backboard where you're just working on the volleys keeping the ball in play all four hands the secret to this is not to overhit the ball but to keep the racket in front of you so you're not swinging and it's nice and easy again try to get them to, cert to uh, aim for a certain number against the wall then have them do all backhands like this backhands keep it in play as you can notice i have my side turned and i just try to keep the ball in play then when they get very proficient, you can have them alternate. One forehand, one backhand, one forehand. Again, if you notice, I'm turn, trying to turn my side as time permits, and you set a number for them. Try to get them to keep their racket in front, no swing. All right. Now in a total of about 10 minutes, you can get a good workout against a backboard, and they can probably hit about two to three times the number of balls that they could on a tennis court. So I feel that it's one of the best ways to improve your game. Plus it gives them uh, self-motivation as opposed to where they need someone on the court telling them how to hit and to continue to forcing them to hit their shots over and over again. Now, another thing you can do, you can practice your serve. Stand back a ways. Most backboards will have a three-foot line painted on the backboard. That is the height of the net in the center. So that gives them an idea, a target to aim for. Uh, I would have them scoot back and just practice their service motion, nice and easy, like this. Keep the ball in play, right, okay nice and easy. So they're trying to develop a correct service motion against the backboard. Or if they're not that advanced, if they do a full motion, 
just a scratch your back motion like we learned on our drill. Very important to come. And you just have them practice it like this. Keep the ball in play. As you can see, you don't need a large number of balls to do this. Usually three or four balls per person is all you need. Now, the next thing we can do is you can have them play some games out where they serve and then they have to play it out and they're trying to beat the backboard. Now, the backboard's a pretty tough opponent because the backboard never misses. So, you have to tell them that so they don't get a little frustrated. But you try to keep it in play. They can come into the net seat. You can have them do some volleys. If they, uh, you say, don't just stand back and rally with the ball. Just try to come into the net. You can have them practice serving and running right into the net and trying to do some volleys up here. Each time, try to keep your racket in front of you. So you can see you can make a game out of it too. Uh, the last drill we can do with, uh, with this is called the overhead drill. Now we did not show you how to do an overhead, but an overhead is a ball that comes very high and it's hit off of a lob and the, and the uh, partner is up at the net. The player is up at the net. The overhead, you put both hands up and you try to hit it in the air. The easiest way to do this, and this is an advanced technique on a backboard, it takes a lot of control to do this, is to hit the bottom of the ball down, or to hit the ball along the bottom of the backboard and force it to bounce up high so you can practice your overhead. So this is the way I start. I hit along the backboard and then I try to practice my overhead. I'll do another one. Hit along the bottom and then practice my overhead. Hit along the bottom and then practice my overhead. Again, that takes a lot of practice, but that's something you can show them how to do. Now, one last drill that we'd like to show you is the alternating drill where uh, Byron Buckley and myself will keep the ball in play and we have partners. Uh, I hit one and then he hits another one. Now you can either play a game where you serve and, he, and we play out the point or you can just practice it keeping it in play. I'll go ahead and play out the game so you can see it. Okay, love, love. And we keep the ball and play to one another. I think I've got him. He's on the run. And if you like it, you can make it tough. You can uh, you can make a hard one for him. You can get him up to the net. Get him up to the short one up to the net. And I'm going to surprise him on this one. I came in and hit a volley on that. Did I get him? Yes, I got him. So I won the first point, 15 left. As you can see, you can just continue to play out a game. It's one of the very best ways to improve a, a, children, a child's tennis game, I believe. Thank you. One of the important things to help physical education teachers establish their credibility and help them in their instruction with young people is to know the, the correct or basic grips. Now a way to do that is, if you'll notice on the, on the grip, there's two lines here, these are bevels on the grip. And there's a different techniques you can use for getting the forehand grip, which is preferably the eastern grip. One of them is just what we call shaking hands, where you actually put the racket down. If you'll notice this bevel, goes right into the V of the hand. The bevel on this on the on the right side goes right into the V of the hand. This is the eastern grip, preferable grip for the forehand, especially on hard surface courts, which most tennis courts are in the United States. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. One is by putting that racket at that on the left hand, holding the throat, and just taking your hand and showing the pull their hand down the strings to the grip, and then that usually gets it right where the bevel is into the V of the hand. Another, uh, then, of course, emphasize your, the shaking hand grip. Another one is putting the racket down and then just reaching over the racket and picking it up. And generally, that will also have the same result of having the grip with the, on the bevel. Now, you don't want them to have their hands over the back of the racket or you don't want them choking up in here. You should be comfortable in here. And the racket grip should be like if they had a bird in their hand. They don't want to kill the bird, but they don't want the bird to get away from it. So it should be a firm grip, but not a tight grip. Now that is for the forehand, for the shots on the, the right side of the body. Now for the backhand, what you do, but what, uh, what I like to do a lot of times, put the thumb here and fingers underneath, and then you turn your hand in, almost like a motorcycle type grip. You turn it in. If you notice, there's a bevel here along the side, and that bevel should go into the V of their hand. This is the backhand grip, and uh, so so the knuckles are really lined up down along the strings of the racket. So this is what be used on the backhand side of the, for playing. Now on serve, there's different techniques on this. 
generally it's probably best to start out with the eastern grip on the serve uh, for students who are beginning. Now as they get more advanced and they want to hit a hard flat serve, they might want to go what is called the continental. Now if you notice the two bevels in the middle, the V gets right in the middle. This is called the continental grip or Australian grip. And this can be used for flat serves as they get more advanced. It's also, the continental grip is good for volley because you do not have to change your grips. As he's watching Bob on the, on the wall hitting uh, volleys from the forehand and backhand, with the continental grip, he did not have to change his grip. And the ball comes so quickly when you're volleying, you don't have a chance to change your grip. So the continental grip is very excellent for, for hitting volleys. Uh, thing. Now, the two-handed backhand is, again, you can get the eastern grip in here. Uh, there's different techniques on two-handed backhand. Some say the eastern grip and then bring the left hand up. Another school of thought, you can try this too, is get the backhand grip, which we had, with the bevel in the middle, and then you bring the left hand in and just join it here on, above the racket, and then you come through and hit the ball. So you can, it's taught two different ways. Uh, some pros teach it with the backhand grip on the, on the, uh, be on the uh, right hand, and then bring up your left hand and hold the racket in here. Uh, there's, so there's a different approach, you can try either way. I like to use a lot of times the backhand grip and then bring the hand up and it fits right in top of the other grip for the backhand, the two-handed backhand. So those will kind of help you with some of the grips because oftentimes students will come up with words like, what's a continental grip? Well, again, that's when the uh, V of your hand's right in the, between the bevels, the eastern grip's more to the right. Now if they mention a western grip, which is usually used on clay courts, it's when you bring your racket, your hand over more even over more so than the eastern and you have the inside bevel here toward the V but that's usually used more in clay courts rather than asphalt courts but that is the western grip then there's grips between this bevel and this bevel on the racket are called the semi-western so western grip the racket is more for hitting up on the ball this type of motion for bouncing balls and this type so uh, that's the western is it, is it more over on this side of the racket the eastern, which is part of the floorable rack, is starting out with the, the players in the physical education classes along this line. Continentals be in the middle. Backhand is on this side. So if you remember the bevels, that'll help you with the grips. After uh, 27 years of coaching high school tennis, 14 years as a physical education teacher, I found out I don't have all the answers, and no one really does. But there's places where you can get the answers. In fact, I have a little tennis bag here. The sources I have found have been very valuable for physical education teachers. First of all, the best place to get information is from the USTA. And one of the things that's valuable is this USTA Equipment and Spatial Services Directory. Uh, it tells you things about where you can get balls, rackets, how you can have a racket drive for free rackets in your community, how to set that up, uh, schoolyard, schoolyard tennis court conversion, how you can make a uh, tennis court out of a schoolyard, uh, a short court tennis, and also all the supportive uh, services they have. They have a lot of films. They're available from the USTA. Also, you should really have a rules book and a uh, case that uh, any of the rules come up and you get that from USTA and you can also get uh, rules for the players themselves or members of your physical education classes. They, another thing that USTA has, they have so many things, is a little thing called starter tennis, uh, how to learn tennis without a tennis court, which is excellent uh, and shows a lot of fundamentals in it. Another thing is sportsmanship, their code of conduct, which shows basic uh, sportsmanship rules that is available and is excellent so there's there's so many things out there that's in the bag from the USTA that you can get that will really help you and Bob has had experience of uh, going to schools and assembly so Bob would you come in here and tell them about the free uh, school assembly program that's available to physical education teachers thank you Byron. Uh, first of all the USTA stands for United States Tennis Association and they're committed to recreational tennis to promoting tennis throughout the United States and uh, one of the programs that they do is a free high school assembly program or grade school. They have trained professionals that will come into a school free of charge and give a program for you. It's one of the best programs I've ever heard of. They promote tennis in your community. And what you'd have to do is you'd need to contact the United States Tennis Association. We have the address here for you. We'd like you to give them a call or write them a letter. Uh, let them know what you're interested in, and I'm sure they'll be glad to send you any kind of information that they can. So here's their address.
we'd like to thank you for, uh, for being part of this video. We hope this helps you out. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact your local pro in the community, who I'm sure will be glad to help you out, or contact the United States Tennis Association. Thank you. Thank you, Bob Pratt.